spoke with Paul on the phone one day. The very next day, I come home from work. I pull up in my driveway, and <laughs> he gave me a direct message. But he planted it like it was a memory. I don't know if you remember this conversation. He probably will. All right? He gave me the guy's name. He gave his location. And he said, call him. Call Mahesh Shabda in Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a healer. As soon as I heard the name Mahesh Shabda, I recognized it immediately from the old days, 69, 70. Okay? When he was like 22, 23 years old, healing people back then. Now he's got a ministry shh, that reaches over a billion people mm. globally. And you've never heard of him. Mm. And he likes it like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. He does the work of God. He can care less if anybody knows who he is. And the vast majority <laughs> of his work is not done in this country. And I think partially because he has the realization that this country is on the fast track to hell. Mm. This church has already lost it here. Okay? Actually, this is where he should be doing it. <laughs> but he goes all over the world. Just came back from Korea. Okay? I called him. No, I called Paul. Because I'm thinking, this is from a conversation I had with Paul the day before. I called Paul. I said, Paul, I said, you remember when we were talking yesterday? I said, I need Mahesh's uh, contact information because God has given me a message to call him. Paul says, I never said a thing about Mahesh Shah. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, now that you just mentioned it, this is the first time I've heard his name in 25 years. <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> this is a pipeline. This is what we all have to have. Amen. Okay. I called my head shop in his office. They were out doing their thing. I speak with his assistant. Okay. I explained the whole thing to her. Okay. She says, Mark, tell me what's going on with you. I said, Liz, I said, this is not about me. This is about my friend. I need help here. 911. Okay. This person could die. I need something. This is way beyond me. Okay? She said, Mark, what's going on with you? She kept asking me the same thing. What's going on with you? No, I told her. I told her about the, you know, the healing I had in the shower. I told her about the healing I had at work. Uh, and, uh, you know, I told her to explain it all. She said, Mark, she said, do you hear what you're saying? She said, he's already anointed. Praying for God to heal you through you is the same as praying for anybody else. It's not possible unless he gives you an anointing. Logical? Pretty logical. Okay. The last thing she said, she said, pray about it. God will give you the words. Okay. I get off the phone. It's 530. Start praying immediately. <laughs> Between 6 o'clock and 1 o'clock in the morning, I get the whole thing. Step-by-step -step instructions do every single word directly from God. I think I read it to you over the phone. Every single bit of it scriptural. I don't know the scriptures that well. Okay? I don't. I'm the first one to admit it. I need to. And I am. I'm getting there. But everything from the instructions to anoint her with oil, I never would have thought of that. Okay? To how to bless the oil, to the prayer to give her without anointing her, to the prayer to give her without laying hands on her, the whole bowl of wax. Okay? And at the very end, with something that I didn't understand at all, I wrote it out phonetically. It was Harabashara, Kurabashara. Mm. It's part of the message. Okay. okay. I called Don Jean that night. I said, listen, I said, if you 
you're willing to give this a shot? I said, you know, <laughs> we could do this, we could try. You know? She said, sure, come on down. So the next day I went down to the radio station. We did it out in the parking lot because we couldn't get in an office. Standing in the parking lot. I anointed her, went through prayer, the whole deal with the pee. Okay, and I am not. I, it, it, when I say I, I don't mean I. Okay, but here's another question for you. Try to eliminate the word I or me from your vocabulary. I can't do it. I've tried. You know, you want to empty yourself and fill it up with him, but you can't get away from describing something that you did, even if it's him through you without saying I. <laughs> so understand, okay? I take credit for nothing. And I'm not saying that because I laid hands on Don and Jean and I prayed exactly the instructions that God gave me, that that is what cured her. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that that night, she was due to go in the next day for her test, her scans, okay? To check on it again. That night, I got the confirmation. I was in the middle of church. All right? I was in the middle of song. And God said, and I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, praying. God said, don't worry about it. It's done. It's done. Now, I'm going to tell you how Satan works on us. And I want to give you a, a little bit spiritual stuff here. <laughs> Not too much. Okay. So just bear with me. We live in a physical world. Okay. We walk in a physical world. We eat in a physical world. We work in a physical world. Everything we do is in a physical world. But there's also a spiritual world all around us. 24 7. When you're sleeping, when you're eating, when you're in the bathroom. I don't care what you do. It's there. Okay? Picture it as you're walking down a corridor. This is good. Thank you. You're walking down a corridor. Okay? You've got Satan on one side, you got God on the other. Alright? And there is a constant, constant battle going on for your very soul 24-7 even in your sleep. Both of them are fighting over you. Now, I'll give you a, a great illustration. The very next day, Donna Jean had to go in for her test at like 10 o'clock in the morning. She didn't get work until late in the afternoon. I had to drive down to a marathon in the Keys. Long drive. All the way down there, I got Satan sitting right here saying, what are you going to tell her if it doesn't work? You know? What are you going to say, big guy? You know, if it comes back positive, she's got pancreatic cancer, what are you going to come up with then? God is saying, don't worry, I told you it's going to worry. <laughs> Have faith, keep faith. I had to stop the car three times on the way down the marathon and get out and pray. Okay? And the last time, Satan just wouldn't shut up. He kept at me, kept at me. Until finally, I lost, I lost my temper. I lost my temper. But I lost my temper with Satan, so that's okay. <laughs> and I've been down by the water, praying down there. And I was walking back to the car. And he started this nonsense again, you know, behind me. And I turned around and I said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to shut up and go back to hell where you belong. Just like that. Science. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> long story short, very long story. I know, I know, I know. I know. Okay. Bam. Right. Donna Jean gets word that afternoon. Still here. We just 
just got to tap it. All right. Since then, <coughs> God has involved me in three other healings. I'll tell you straight up. The last of which was this past week. One of the most outrageous ones was two weeks ago last night, somebody, a friend of mine, uh, came to church and pulled me out of church at the end. He said, you got to come with me. I mean, actually, I was supposed to go with him. I totally forgot because I'd been fasting for two days. <laughs> I was a little moody. All right. But I was absolutely stoned in the spirit. He couldn't have picked a better time to do this. All right. He said, you got to come with us. He said, we got to go to this rehab hospital in South Beach. There's a woman there that needs healing. I said, okay, let's go. But I was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> we get over to South Beach. I go in, never saw this one before. I don't know who she was still in. All right. And uh, so I started right away. I mean, I, I think these, you know, there was like six people here, three of them ministers. All right. And uh, one good friend of mine's uh, president. so low that these people, I mean, they were all around the bed. They couldn't even hear what I was saying from them. And I said, by the authority and in the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to leave this woman now. Amen. That woman would let out, her, she was comatose, by the way. Okay? She was not alive. seconds. She was wide awake. She was sitting up in bed. The color was back in her face. She was smiling and she actually started talking. Hallelujah. Miracles. Miracles. It's all you have to do is ask. Since the day that you were saved, myself why. He gave me a prophecy. I didn't know it was a prophecy. To me it was just another message until I told my sister about it. My sister's been in the ministry of the Holy Spirit since 1972. Alright? This was, to me it was just another message. I told her about it. She said, Mark, that is no message, dude. She said, that is straight up prophecy. Let me tell you how I know because there's three other people around the country that have been given exactly the same words over the course of the last two years. And the prophecy very simply is this. Again. <laughs> well, get ready because mm -hmm. something big is coming. Yeah. Something big is coming. And in the current state of my church, because this is God speaking, this ain't me. In the current state of my church, many will fail. Mm. There is time to rebuild, but it will take a revival of great magnitude because the time is very short. Yeah. End of the message. Yeah. Impression? I get the 
impression every time I get that message two to three years. I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of it means. Okay? I have no idea <coughs> what it means. All I know is that he gave it to me. And it turned out to be the same thing he's been given to three other people. Started two years ago. Her impression was five years. Tell me that ain't dead on. My initial reaction was, why me? Why are you giving this to me? Okay. I don't have a ministry. I don't have a following. I don't have anybody that I can even tell this stuff to. Why me? Give it to some pastor, some big church, you know, that can get the word out there. Okay. Then it worked. Instead of having a territory to sell in, I've been in charge of every single church in Miami-Dade County. From the Miami-Dade County line all the way to Key West. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm telling God, you need to find somebody that can get this message to, to, to people. He's telling me, you are the I just gave you a promotion. Now, I go out and I talk, not just to people, I talk to pastors every day. And every day, I give them that message. Yeah. Every single day. My very first stop was a dude that has, I, I've come to love tremendously. All right? Pastor, I'm not saying we're not even denomination or anything, okay? He's a pastor. Okay, he's actually a bishop. <laughs> I walk in, he's in the middle of the service. I sit and I listen to the service. God blew me away, dude. It was awesome. We go back in his back office. This dude is so full of anger, it was unbelievable. Mm. He goes off into this tirade. I mean, 20 minutes, man. I'm sitting, I'm listening. I mean, cursing. I mean, everything. And I'm saying, same guy I was just listening to him there. All right. He gets through and he says, what do you think of that? Like, I'm supposed to do something. <laughs> you know? I said, Willie. That's his name. That's his nickname. <laughs> I said, Willie. I said, you know what? I said, we can talk about business anytime you want. All right? But he said, I'm going to tell you right now. see you in a few days. I came back to see you in a few days. This dude was on fire. On fire. We spent two hours talking about the old days. Miracles. This and that. But Next day I get a call from the attorney's office. Okay? The same woman that I spent two and a half hours glorifying God with in front of my manager. Okay? Calling me to thank me. I said, what are you thanking me for? She said, I have been praising God ever since the day you walked in my office. I said, what do you mean? 
She said, all those things that I told you about traveling all over the world, setting up schools and churches and all, that was in the past, dude. I haven't done any of that in three years. She said, you walked through my God, through my doors, and God's anointing was on you so strong. I've started my ministry all over again. that pipeline is open. He starts giving you borders. As soon as he starts giving you borders, and he and you start obeying those orders. Okay? Doing says that very thing. Right. If you trust in God, <coughs> God will take care of you. Right. <laughs> Obviously, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I still have all of this. <laughs> now you see what I mean? <laughs>
that he gave his only son. To die a miserable, humiliating death on the cross for your sins. For all of our sins, past, present, and future. Because he knows what you're going to do a half hour from now. <laughs> but here's the trick. All he asks is that Scripture says, you're either for me or you're against me. There ain't no middle ground. There is no gray area. It's pretty much black or white. Mm -hmm. You're either 100% mm -hmm. for him or you're against him. Period. He don't want half of you. He don't want three quarters of you. 99.9999999% ain't good enough. If you want to experience everything that he has to give you, you've got to give it 100%. Every single. 